you should be in the back. Right, so they're off, as in f Right, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, good to have you along. Now, this is the Fordson Super Major. And later on in the video, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to the Super Major. But before we do that, let's talk about something else that used to stand here, which was the little Dexter. Now, when the Dexter arrived here, it was um, <coughs> addicted to ether. Now, what we did, rather than keep pouring ether down its throat, is we addressed the problems. By the time it left here, it didn't need ether. It started under its own means and uh, drove out. And as most of you know, we then put it into a raffle and uh, we sold tickets and there was a winner and the little Dexter ended up going to Aberdeen. But what did we do with the proceeds from the raffle? Drinking wine and eating cheese and catching some rays, you know. Hi right then, muckers. So, how did we go from having a Fordson Dexter to this? Well, to put it quite simply, it was down to your support and generosity. Now, if you follow my channel, you'll know that we had that project Fordson Dexter, which we got running and driving, and we did some other bits to it, and then we put it up as a raffle prize. Now, unlike most raffles, um, for those of you that didn't win, normally it's just a case of ka -ching, thank you, yeah, good luck next time, loser. So long as you lost all our drink money is what she goes, she's gone. Whereas everybody that supported the raffle for the Dexter, you guess obviously there's the, you know, the one that won, which is fair enough. Very good, congratulations. Oh, would you look at that. But all of you that bought a ticket, you've all done something um, remarkable in fact. You've got the knowledge that your money has gone to helping the collies, the rescue. Now, for those of you that have been asking for videos of the dogs, um, here's a little snippet for you. There's a snippet of a dog called Riley. Now, Riley is absolutely oh, just fantastic. His owner split up and he was moved from pillar to post. And it just wasn't working out. He just wouldn't settle. And there was even talk of having him put to sleep. And that's where the rescue got involved. And they took Riley in. I then got Riley placed temporarily with a very good friend of mine who's fantastic with dogs and Riley's really come out of himself and oh, just watch this. So this is my friend's yard and uh, the dogs can uh, you know get used to being with other dogs. They've got a pen if they want to get out of the rain or the wind or anything like that but most of the time they just roam around the yard and uh, at night they go back home with him. You are such a good boy, aren't you? Now this is the tea hut, obviously where we go for a brew and uh, Riley just loves being with people. As long as he's with someone, he's happy. You're a good boy. <laughs> You're a funny boy, aren't you? Big boy, aren't you? You're a big boy. You're a big boy. You're a smiler, aren't you? You got a smile? Yes. Now, why do we need the little Suzuki? Well, here's why. So at the Collie Rescue Charity, they've got sheep. And the sheep are used to keep the grass down so the dogs can be exercised. So it keeps all their paddock area down nice. And they're also used to assess working collies that come in off farms to see how good they are, if they can work sheep or not. and then they can be put with the relevant uh, fosterers and then hopefully be adopted. So the sheep play a critical part. The trouble is the sheep, uh, especially in the winter time, are up on the mountainside and there's a steep stony track, which there's a waterfall and whatever, which comes down the track during the winter. And it can just be ice. It can be uh, snow on there or it's awful. And Lynn at the Collie Rescue Centre walks up every day to feed 
and water the sheep. She carries the water, she carries the feed, and she's fell over a couple of times because it's just so steep and slippery. So initially we thought it'd be a great idea to get a little like John Deere Gator or a Kawasaki Mule, that sort of thing, a little RTV type vehicle. And we've been looking around and to be honest, unless you were gonna buy one that was either brand new or just two or three years old, basically the ones that come up second hand are absolutely And even then you're still paying top dollar for them. So anyway, I was looking around for one or two and was having a chat with somebody and he said, why don't you get a little Suzuki Jimny? And I'm like, no, because I need a mule or a gator. And he went, listen. Yeah, I can hear you, Clem Fandango. My brother-in-law is a shepherd up in the uh, Dales in Derbyshire. Come on then, Plato, enlighten me. And he had all them, the, the little gators and mules and stuff. He said, they're great and they get about and whatever. He said, but he said, as soon as they get a few hours on them and, you know, they've done a few years, he said, they start falling apart. He said, and then they're expensive. I went, yeah, I know. You can tell me about it. He said, but then my brother-in-law actually bought a Suzuki Jimny and never looked back. And I'm like, well, how do you mean? He said, well, think about it. There's tons of them about, so spare parts aren't a problem. They make spare parts brand new for them. There's plenty of second-hand spare parts for them. He said, and they've got a proper chassis, proper axles, proper transmissions, and whatever, a good engine. And I'm thinking, yeah, you're, you're right. They are built properly, aren't they? And we know that they've got a fantastic reputation off-road. You got to find one that's in good condition. This is an 04 plate, and it is probably the best Jimny I have seen in my entire search over the last few months. The bodywork is good. Um, it's been actually undersealed from new, which is unusual. A lot of people underseal them once they start to rot, and they can rot. This has never had a piece of welding anywhere on it because it was undersealed from new. Also, they tend to go and start to rot around the headlights. This shows no signs of rot. And in the rear boot compartment. Again, this is absolutely immaculate. So I saw it advertised, did a little bit of research, rang the guy up and basically said, I'm on my way. I got there, looked over it and bought it there and then. Couldn't refuse it. It is incredible. The results have been incredible. No one here. Oh, sorry. The results have been incredible. As you can see, it's had uprated suspension. Um, and the underside is absolutely immaculate, as I said. And that's purely down to the fact that it was undersealed from new. Uh, I said about three previous owners, that's all. Now, the one thing that I really don't like about this are the tyres. It's got these Insa turbos on, which all the let's off road boys seem to love. The trouble is, these tyres have got an awful profile. They're really sort of flat. Um, they're remolds, and the handling is fucking dire. Honestly, this that's the only thing that lets this truck down at the moment is the handling on the road it is terrible i mean to be honest it's like having four malnourished rubber clad gimps wrapped around your rims well bring out the gimp so i've gone and bought four um sort of all-terrain type tires um and they're not remolds just to say the trouble is these these are remolds like it like this is the thing if you got if you riding on ling longs no matter what happened in traffic it's your fault these are obviously new tires and uh they're of a very similar pattern to the old kumos we used to run on the old discoveries they're not a kumo as i said they're some other make but they got good reviews and as i said they got a pattern and profile that uh, i'm used to having as i said on the old discos so we're going to put them on this You should be in the back. Right, we're gonna get these tires changed, get rid of these bloody insers, bloody insecure. And we've got the new tires in the back. So hopefully, you'll notice a bit of difference. I would 
would rather shit out a pregnant hedgehog than go anywhere on these things. Right, so they're off, as in fuck. So there we go, four new tyres. And it's completely transformed this little Suzuki. I mean, they're still off-road tyres, you know. Um, you're not going to handle like a Porsche, but you're not sort of fighting it like this all the while and just try to stop at skating between that lane and this lane. Just a complete world of difference. It's really nice to drive, actually. Now, at the point we were ready to take the little Suzuki Jimny across to the Collie Rescue place, um, it started to rain. And it continued to rain. And it rained a bit more and more and more and even more. And it just kept raining. Now it carried on raining. Still kept raining. You get the idea. And now, the track up to the mountain is virtually inaccessible. So I've got to take the digger and go and sort the track out. So first thing I've got to do is make sure that everything flows away from the track uh, so no water can carry on washing down. The trouble is that the water exposed all the big boulders that make the base of the track and washed all the finer, smaller stuff to the bottom. So I've now got to take all that stuff from the bottom and take it back up and spread it and track it in, compact it as we go. And when I do that in the next couple of weeks, I'll video it and show you. Right, muckers, question time. Now, when I deliver the Suzuki to the dog rescue, I'll be doing a bit of a road trip. You have no functioning gauges. No, not a one. However, the radio still works. Funny as that may seem, with all this mess, that the radio is the only thing that's really working good, and it's as clear as a bell. Don't ask me how. <laughs> Basically, I'll be going from the east coast of England right across to Wales. Now, here, some of you say, that's not much of a road trip. It is in a Suzuki. And the thing is, uh, once I drop the Suzuki off, I've got to get my way back. And I'm going to be doing that on the train. Now, you've never been on a train before, have you? And I've checked and I can take her, but we've got to change trains in London. And you've never been to London before, have you? So, I might stop off for an hour or two in London and take her around, just have a little bit of a look, something a bit different, uh, just while I wait for the next train. Now, here's the question, very simple. Do you want me to film the road trip and the train journey back with little madam here? If you do... Put your answers in the old squid pit in the comments section below this video. Put road trip video. And if enough of you uh, are interested, I'll film it. So that brings us all the way back to this where we started. And again, a lot of you will have seen the journey of this. The engine on this was absolutely knackered. And uh, we've put another engine in it. It's a better engine. But the thing is so original, it's been untouched. So I'm going to put the Super Major in the raffle. So you'll all get a chance to buy tickets and you've all got as much chance as anyone else of winning it. So as I said, it's like the holy grail for a restorer. Well, I'll ask him, but I don't think he'll be very keen. Uh, he's already got one, you see? Because it runs, it drives, it drives very well and it stops and it stops very well. The brakes on this are some of the best I've ever found on any major. But good tin work, good original tin work. And as I said, there's very little to do. It'd make a fantastic tractor out on a road run or working day tractor, put a plow or whatever behind it or just have it at home. But the point is, you've then got the choice if you win it as to whether you preserve the patina or you paint it. That is up to the winner. 
not me, the winner. As I said, everything will be good on it by the time it leaves here. And there's not a lot to do. It's not like the Dexter. The Dexter required a lot. This whole beauty doesn't. And that's what's so special about it. So there we go, muckers. That is how you turn a Fordson Dexter into a Suzuki Jimny. It's right in a dog. Like I said, if you want to see that road trip of taking the Jimny across to Wales and then heading back on the train with uh, me and the, I know, I'm telling them, put your answers, as I said, in the older comment section, all right? Just let us know. Just put uh, road trip video or something like that. But anyway, like I said, thank you for your support with the uh, Dexter and Suzuki uh, project. And hopefully we can do the same again with the Super Major. We've got to go, have we? Right, we've got to go anyway. So uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed that and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Do well.